So first of all, it's important for you all to know who am I. So myself, Zia Rahman Ansari. I have done bachelor in civil engineering and master in structural engineering. I have and I have work experience of almost all the sectors. And since last few years, I'm working as a independent design consultant and software trainer. So basically, you we all here together. to understand some important requirements some important needs of the industry if you want to work as a structural engineer whatever if suppose you want to approach any consultancy if you want to start your own business own consultancy if you want to work as an independent in, uh, design consultant okay so it is important to know what is the need of the industry so basically there are four important requirements over which you have to get the command then only you can be, uh, you, you may become a good structural engineer you can become a professional structural engineer actually there is a, a, a big gap between your academics and your industry whatever in the academics that is uh, not completely required in your industry and what industry that is uh, actually demanding that is not present in your academic so there is a gap so this training uh, through this training program we are trying to cover that that gap and you can get easily uh, you, uh, you will be placed easily in any consultancy in the structural design field especially so, so there are four important uh, uh, pillars over which you have to get the command out of which the first one is the design software so if you want to work as a structural engineer so the current scenario is what whenever you are going to face any interview when you are going to face uh, uh, any kind of uh, job interviews so they will ask about how many softwares you are knowing that is the current scenario so you need to look into the market what are the different softwares like there are so many softwares are available in market but it is not your job to learn every software and that is not possible that is not needed so if you want to work in a structural design field so you need to look into the market what is what softwares are in demand so there are so many softwares are there what's their application so you need to look at that i am not going to uh, say any software especially so it's your job to find out what softwares is is there in in demands so there is a itap software there is stat pro software there is a rcdc software there is a tecla software so many softwares are there so you need to look into the market which software in demand so your first job and you have to uh, uh, have the you need to have the deep knowledge deep command over that software how to utilize software learning of software is not a difficult task that you can learn within one and two days that is a clerical job but actually software is just a software you should have an idea how to utilize that software if you are giving right inputs the software will give the right output if you are giving wrong input what you will get hello wrong output wrong output so how to validate the software so validation of the software is not taught by the uh, most of the training uh, tra uh, trainers and training centers what is the validation of the software whether your software is giving the right result or not if you are giving the right input so that's a very important thing that we are covering in our training program there is a special one session is there there we are going to talk about the validation of the software with uh, with different structural elements like we are taking the beams columns slabs uh, and we are going to validate the software with manual calculation and with the itap result with the rcdc results with the manual calculation using the expert sheets okay so that is the important thing so first requirement is what not having the knowledge having the commands over the softwares the second requirement of the industry is what basic concepts that you will get from your academics that you will get from uh, your books uh, by, by knowledge so what are what are the different types of the beams what are the different types of the uh, co uh, columns based on the loading what are the different grades of the concrete which grade you have to use for the different uh, different structure if suppose you are going to use medium rise structure if you are suppose going to use high rise structure if you are going to suppose uh, or, or if you are going to work over the medium rise structure so what grade you have to use how your structure is going to deform uh, deform under the application of the gravitational loading how your structure is going to deform under the lateral loading what done by the what done by the earthquake loading what done by the wind loading what are the different methods of analysis what 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 are the difference uh, differences you will get if you are going to perform static if you are going to perform the dynamic 
what will happen if you are going to use higher grade of concrete what will happen if you are going to use lower grade of concrete how your beam is going to be deformed so these all are the basic concepts that that is important to know so software is the secondary thing but the primary thing is what your basic con uh, concept your base base of your knowledge so that is that is important the second aspect of, of uh, uh, demand of uh, industry your concept how deep uh, depth of knowledge you are having and that depth of the knowledge will be utilized in in using of the software so these two important parameters is very important and third one is the design code having the knowledge of design code without of knowledge without of having the uh, brief and deep knowledge about the design code and its clauses and its requirements uh, or, or its limitations uh, you will not able to design economical structure as well as stable structure there are two important uh, uh, things is very important over which uh, structural engineer has to control what first stability second one is your economy so if you are not having the knowledge about this uh, course you will not able to design your st structure as uh, stable and economical it is just like if suppose you are moving over a road and you are not going to follow the uh, rules and uh, guidelines and instruction of the moving over road so what will happen you are going to harm to yourself and others also similarly if you are not going to follow the clauses and co uh, co uh, codal requirement you are not going to design economical and stable structure it will it will it will collapse it will harm to the people living inside of the structure and the structure itself so what are the codes are there and what important clauses and what important limitations are there that is important to know what is IS four five six? What for IS eight hundred two thousand seven? What for IS eight seven five one? Uh, one two three parts are there. What what for, for what purpose we are using IS one eight nine three two thousand sixteen one three nine two zero two thousand sixteen? Uh, what the where uh, where we are going to implement IS SP thirty four? So this is very very important for if you are going to deal high rise structure one six seven double zero two thousand seventeen is there. So this is very important to have the knowledge about the design codes and the most important uh, that might be in your uh, knowledge if you are going to face any interview so they will ask the first question about your what can you guess hello what kind of software uh, you know software is there okay software is covered then basic knowledge is covered and uh, design uh, knowledge you are, uh, codal knowledge you are having what last requirement and the first requirement they are asking about can you guess how many year of hello experience. experience exactly the most important thing how many year of experience you are having so that we are going to hire you if you are not having the experience they are going to uh, uh, reject you so the current scenario of the market and industry is what they are expecting the student should capable of doing something the students or parties or, or, or uh, 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 the job seeker they should have some knowledge and that should uh, that should do something that is having the capability to do something so that is what experience they are expecting so experience is what actually what is the experience we are not uh, uh, most of the, the time we are not we are not uh, taking it in consideration what does by the experience so experience is what actually dealing the real challenges experience is what dealing the real challenges and that real challenges will come with the real projects all the real projects all the different projects will have the unique challenges all the projects all the structures having the unique challenges and dealing that unique challenges is nothing but your experience so how many real life projects you have uh, or uh, you have designed that is that they are expecting so these all are the four requirements and by keeping these all four requirements in mind and by consideration of this industry demand and by filling the gap between your academics and your industry we have prepared this training program there we are going to uh, uh, there we are going to cover all that aspects here we are going to uh, cover all the basic and advanced commands of the software in detail the software we are going to learn so that should be there 
so software is very uh, software uh, uh, how to do the modeling modeling of the color and defining and different things so many so many things are there that we are going to cover in detail in this training program first thing second the basic knowledge so what about the basic knowledge see how how the bending moment diagram will be how the shear force diagram will be in detail the basic concept we are going to cover in this training program if you are not uh, learning these all things in your academics it's okay no problem but here we are going to cover everything from basic everything we are pro, uh, we are going to cover from basic uh, like uh, what grades you have to use what does mean the m20 what is what is what will be its proportion uh, m30 when you have to use uh, uh, what does mean the different types of the column uh, uniaxially biaxially okay and it's a failure so basic concept here we are going to cover thereafter we are going to take a real life project very complicated structure not a dummy project like square shape here we are going to take real challenging project and we are going to do everything that we are going to talk here after some time okay i will show you what kind of project we are going to take here so after having this training program okay you will be able to design entire structure and not only to design you will be able to schedule it you will be able to design it you will be able to uh, detail it and you will be able to prepare the final sheet and that sheet we are going to send on side for the site execution so daily live sessions will be there daily interaction will be there and here i am going to uh, teach every everything every point we are going to cover and after that we are going to take high rise structure all the advanced concept we are going to cover there i will let you know okay in in upcoming slides we will see what topics in high rise structure we are going to cover so in metropolitan cities like bombay pune if you are going to work and if you are if, if it is needed to deal high rise structure so will not be uh, feeling uh, to yourself as an handicap you will have the knowledge how to assign the earthquake loading how to perform the static dynamic so many things is there in high rise structure that we are covering in this training program so after having this training program you will be fit for industry okay so see to do any project it is important to follow some uh, some uh, steps at the initial stage you have to follow some steps to complete any project so if you are going to work as a structural engineer so architectural plan will come to you first so this kind of architectural drawing will come to you like this kind of architectural drawing okay so this kind of real project we are going to take see this is the what uh, this it is what architectural plan so uh, what to do with this architectural plan after having the architect uh, after having uh, this architectural plan from architect so how to read this architectural drawing most of the time students are lagging to read this uh, architectural drawing they are missing some important points uh, how to read this architectural drawing so we will learn this in detail how to read this architectural drawing okay after that uh, after having this uh, the next step and uh, next uh, job of structural engineer is what to position the vertical elements so what does mean by the vertical elements so your vertical elements will be your columns will be your shear wall so very very interesting topic and important point how to position your column where to position why i am going to put this column shear wall here why i am not going to put here so how to decide the position of your column over the architectural plan that we are going to cover in detail how to position how to uh, how to decide the orientation of the column like suppose if i am talking about the this c23 so why i am going to put it as vertical why i am not going to put it as horizontal what will what will effect on your structure if i am going to put it a horizontal what will effect if i am going to put it as vertical so this is a position of the column orientation of the column so brief and detailed uh, discussion will be there about the positioning of the column positioning of the beams positioning of the slab okay a uh, sunk slab what does it mean the sunk slab so this uh, will be there in our training first thing second thing how to decide the plenary section sizes of these uh, elements very interesting and very important topic how to decide the preliminary section size because we have to proceed for the modeling so before of the modeling we have to decide the preliminary section sizes so how what section size of the column we have to choose actually it is not the final design it is what preliminary sizes so how to decide there should be some guideline there should be some instruction there should be some uh, some sample calculation to decide the preliminary section size of your column 
so we are using spreadsheets for doing some important things these spreadsheets see for the for designing preliminary section size of the column we are having some important excel sheets very interesting and very very uh, 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 practical sheets we are having to to do this uh, sample things so how to decide the preliminary section size of your column how to decide your preliminary section size of your beam how you, how to decide the preliminary section size of uh, slab there are some some uh, uh, literatures are also there that we will share these all excel sheets we will share with you all then how to design this uh, uh, design one way slab two way slab staircase uh, okay uh, foundation actually everything we are not going to cover uh, uh, design in the software some important structural elements like uh, slabs uh, staircase uh, uh, up to certain extent the foundations uh, we are designing by using the spread sheets so this kind of excellent excel sheets we are having and that we will share with you to design the uh, uh, important structural elements okay so after after making the decision of preliminary section sizes we are going to prepare the uh, structural framing plan this this is called as structural framing plan most of you those who want to become a structural engineer they are not aware with what does in by the structural framing plan what structural framing plan will include so brief discussion will be there how to prepare this structural framing plan and and so many things are there so uh, to discuss about preparing the structural framing plan that we will cover in detail in our training program okay after preparation of this uh, this uh, uh, structural framing plan we have to move to the software uh, whatever you are going to use like here we are going to use it app software so see this is what finally uh, suppose let me show you like here after having this uh, 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 in in the software your work is going to start after preparing the structural framing plan okay so here what you need to do first thing actually you have to define so many things material properties how to define the material properties that we will see how to define the section property that we will see how to define the uh, uh, slab uh, in slab most of the time students are confused when to define the shell element when to define the membrane element what is the difference between shell element membrane element uh, what are the different types of element in the software like frame element shell element so brief discussion will be there when to use uh, uh, a shell element when to use the membrane element what will be uh, what will be the influence of the different type of element uh, if you are using the shell element so what will happen if you are using the membrane element then what will happen that will cover okay what sizes we have to use that i have to, uh, that i have discussed uh, what section sizes of the element we have to use okay then uh, after that we are moving to prepare the model so before of preparing the model we need to prepare prepare the grid lines so what does you have the grid lines so if your architectural geometry is simple if your architectural geometry is like uh, uh, like like this a simple geometry is there okay like this suppose this this plan this architecture plan or this structural framing plan is simple so i'm going to call it a simple uh, uh, in plan geometry so for this kind of uh, how we are going to prepare the grid lines so there are three methods to prepare the grid lines very first is what uh, uh, first is offset point method look at here uh, forming grids in it app software is a very important step without of preparing the grid lines you will not able to prepare your model so off offset point method is there it app quick template method is there export and import method is there so when to use these different methods that is important to understand if your architectural geometry is very very different then we are going to export this drawing and directly going to import this drawing in the software so how to do this if the geometry is very simple then how to how to prepare the grid line in the software here the grid lines are not available but here the grids are grids are available so how to in in this situation which method you have to adopt that we will discuss in detail then after that we are going to prepare the models uh, uh, modeling of the column we are going to what we are going to prepare the modeling of modeling of the column so just go to uh, see just say column say apply so yeah these all columns are there in this way so so many things are there to understand like how to prepare the uh, how to uh, model the column so there are long way there is a short way within a uh, 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 
beginners what they are doing they are taking so many times like 5 minutes 10 minutes to model this column but i will let you know how instantly within within 5 second how you can model these all columns then there we are going to model the beams how to model the beams <coughs> within a minutes within a seconds advanced way how to model the slabs that we will see how to model the slabs and after completion of the modeling then we are going to learn how to assign the load over this structure how to assign the loads like how to calculate the wall load how to calculate the area load how to calculate the floor finish load okay so brief uh, 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 introduction will be there how to calculate the how to calculate the loads okay so in this way we are going to cover like how to complete the modeling so see just see uh, we are looking how to assign the load. So just go to display show uh, this what wall load. How to assign the wall load? How to calculate the wall load? How how you will get the uh, density of densities of different uh, structural elements, the uh, different materials like if brick is there and stone is there, glass is there. So which code will tell you about all these densities? So IS eight seven five part 1 part part 1 for the for the densities of different materials part 2 for the live load so live load we are going to look so after having this we are going to prepare our model so once your model gets ready how to check your model most of the times is uh, uh, most of the time you might be uh, observed on youtube there how to check your model so there is a, only one step they are saying go to analyze go to run analysis and in run analysis, sorry, uh, go to go to check model and by checking these all options, uh, checking these all option and say, okay, we are going to perform the uh, checking of model. So what uh, notification you are getting here? Tell me, is there any modeling error or not? Hello. No modeling errors seen. There is no modeling errors. But if I'm saying, yeah, there is a modeling error, then software is saying that there is a no modeling error but if i am saying yeah there is a modeling error then what software is saying that uh, there is no modeling error model, model is perfect but still i am saying that there is a modeling error precision hoga sir ye mm see still i am making it as zero but still it is showing what uh, uh, modeling error is there but the software will show you there is no modeling error so how to catch so only this is not only the option to check your model is having the modeling error or not so that i will cover in our training there are so many ways to uh, to check whether the modeling error is uh, is uh, is there or not most of the time practitioners are lagging in this point they are missing to check uh, correct uh, missing to check their model whether is there modeling error or not okay so that we will see in detail in our in our program modeling errors and then how to correct that modeling errors that is of one, of one challenge and one important step to correct let's see very very important very important let me show you you all are with me hello yes sir yes, yes sir it's kindly yes, request to all of you kindly put your name in the chat box along with your contact number kindly please please kindly write your name and contact number in the chat box so here we are talking about what a uh, special point we are taking okay modeling errors okay so uh, correcting of modeling error is very important if if your model is wrong so your analysis will be wrong if your model is wrong then your design will be wrong if your analysis if your model is wrong then your detailing will be wrong everything is wrong your base is what you are modeling so don't compromise with the modeling you had to give more time to complete the model that's why in our training program in the first section we are completely focused like 12 to 13 or 14 or 15 session will be there that is specially talking about uh, about the commands of the modeling and completion of the modeling and checking of the modeling and all the advanced way of completion of the modeling 
most of the time students are lagging uh, or participants are lagging or practitioners are lagging to prepare the correct model and they are going to compromise with the uh, errors in the modeling they are not having to um, knowledge to check uh, uh, how to check the modeling errors so very very important uh, that we will cover in our training program how to complete the modeling okay so next step is what uh, after the preparation uh, after uh, preparing your model we have to proceed for the analysis so simple how to start the analysis so before of uh, analysis so many things we have to set so many things we have to set in our model so like uh, defining of the uh, defining of uh, uh, like uh, uh, load combinations uh, uh, setting of load cases uh, it's a very important uh, option has given by the software load cases what does mean the load is very very important if if these options the soft it has software is not giving so we'll be in trouble why we will come to in trouble that we will see this is very uh, setting of load cases very very important point so how to see how what why it is important so i'm not going to cover here because the time will not allow to discuss everything me uh, everything uh, to discuss here okay so so many things is there uh, so we will set this thing after that uh, uh, we are going to proceed for the analysis and after completion of the analysis so many things will be there to check uh, whether your analysis is right or wrong with every step there will be the some check uh, before of the modeling uh, there will be some setting after the modeling will be check before of the analysis some setting will be there after the analysis there will be the some check before of the design some setting will be there after the design some checks will be there so validation at every stage is very important and that we will cover in our training program okay so after completion of the analysis how we how how you will come to know whether your analysis is right or wrong is there any surety or it is just like uh, uh, you have prepared the model you have uh, assigned the load then everything is right so it is not like that you have to check your analysis is right or wrong so how to check there are so many checklist there are so many checklist how you can validate your analysis is right or wrong then after making that all checks and ensuring that everything is okay everything is correct we are proceeding for the next step of designing in the design stage what uh, there will be the some setting like we have to define the load combination okay so load combination we have to define before of the analysis also okay and then uh, we have to set something like uh, go to uh, go to design section view revised preferences so what does mean all these options most of the time trainers what they are doing they are saying that whatever the things is present here it's all okay let it to be as it is but in our training program each and every point we are going to cover what does mean that is design code what is the minimum eccentricity why it is yes why it why it is it should not be no Oh, why, why, why? What does my additional movement? What does your P delta analysis? We'll talk about P delta analysis after some time. What is the partial safety factor? What are the different methods of anal uh, design? Is uh, like uh, working stress method, uh, limit stress method, uh, ultimate load method, uh, and there are there are uh, uh, changes over the time. What does your utilization factor limit? Uh, every time, every point, it is very important because actually why why we are not having the confidence of designing this structure because of lack of knowledge about all these points if you if you have the reasoning uh, uh, with all of your actions if you are having the reasoning along with all of your actions so you will get the confidence of doing the things okay so here we will cover everything so go to design then go to uh, view revise so this is this is not checked this is not enabled to operate why because there are some steps to make all the things to be checked and then go to design and go to view revise overrides so very very important step what does the framing type ordinary ductile detailing and ordinary detailing ductile detailing okay the when to use ordinary when to use ductile we will cover then uh, uh, effective length factor is a very very important point to discuss about the effective length factor if you are going to design the column most of the time students are uh, confused like uh, their column is failing so actually the, why the column is going to fail okay perform the design first i am going to perform the design so here the design is going to be performed for your structure and it is going to check whether there, whether is there any design uh, design is okay or not whether the design is okay or not 
so after after checking all these things it is show you, it will show you the design result it will show you what final design result okay so after the getting the design result you should be able to optimize the design whether the design is correct or not and if the design is okay but it is if suppose it is asking to provide the more percentage of reinforcement okay so this kind of result will be shown by the software like uh, this much area of reinforcement required for the beam what does mean by these uh, values what does mean by these locations why these values are given six times for this beam above lower above lower above lower so this is about the location uh, and how to uh, how to read this drawing uh, uh, design result okay that we will cover in detail if suppose any column is going to fail suppose this column is going to be fail so how to check this column is going to be fail okay most of the time what the trainers are saying hello can anyone guess what will be the solution of uh, if this column suppose this column is going to fail so what is what will be the solution to make this column to be passed can anyone guess or can anyone suggest hello increase the size of column sir very good increase the size of uh, uh, column anyone else fast yeah it is a general discussion you all have take the part tell me that is and this is the way of uh, taking my session here i want the reinforcement much more. area sorry ashok sir In increase the reinforcement area increasing the reinforcement area okay good anyone else change orientation aklash very good very good changing of orientation good changing material property changing material properties anyone else except aklash ashok sir vijay sir hello okay so most of the times what that uh, uh, what taught by the trainers like changing of the section size increasing the section size as vijay said so that is not only the solution yeah that is one solution but is but that is not only the solution actually first you need to know what is the cause of the failure you all missed to say this actually first try to know what is the solution sorry what is the problem of failure of uh, this column vijay am i right or wrong yes sir first try to know what is the cause without of uh, knowing the cause how you can treat the problem how you can solve the problem unless and until you are not having the idea the problem is happening uh, due to what reason you will not able to solve it so first try to know so right click over the member and go to flexural detail look at the result so how to read this report most of the time uh, uh, it is not taught by the most of the training centers and, uh, and trainers so what things we need to look here it is saying that 1.03% okay yeah here it is passing here it is passing but if as per as if, if suppose it is saying that 1.03 if i am saying that just for example it is more i am not expecting the percentage of reinforcement more than 0.8% then what why it is going to increase beyond of my expectation so what is the reason so you need to check uh, you you should be able to check over that the cause of the failure and once you catch the cause of the failure you will be able to treat for that failure so if suppose the column is going to fail so so many options are there first is what uh first you need to look uh, uh, about uh, its cause of failure yeah if you are getting like it is lagging uh, by by making the decision of correct orientation so change the orientation of the column like suppose actually there are so many things i have to discuss then you can understand this problem okay so there are so many solutions i'm not uh, i'm not in this state to cover everything here right now okay so one solution is what changing the orientation if it is not going to be solved by uh, then we are going to like uh, 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 change the section sizes uh, okay so so many options are there and we are going to practice over that to make the design then then varying uh, playing with the effective length factor there is a very important point effective length factor okay effective length factor is very important we have to get the control over the effective length factor okay so your column will be pass the uh, will pass the design check then what does mean these values so whether it is a uh, okay uh, so what your code is saying the code is saying that for the column minimum uh, percentage of reinforcement should be 0.8 to maximum 4 or 6 there is a there is a discussion between 4 and 6 that i am going to cover in our training program 
when to use maximum four when to use maximum six okay so uh, for the beam what is the minimum grade of concrete uh, sorry minimum uh, percentage of reinforcement or area of reinforcement has suggested by the code so the code suggesting that as per the is 456 the minimum area of reinforcement for your uh, beam should be what 0.85 times b into d divided by fy so you have to validate whether your software is giving the right result or not how you can let me show you just go to this kindly write your name and contact number in the chat box please kindly write your name and contact number in the chat box please you all are with me hello yes sir okay see suppose uh, 0.85 here it was it is what point 85 understand this okay 0.85 b width of this uh, uh, beam let me show you what is the section size check this just right click over that 230 by 500 section size okay so 230 by 0.85 multiplied by b is 230 230 by 500 overall depth i am going to uh, take here okay uh, and divide it by fy the grade of uh, steel is here is 500 okay just give me answer 0.85 multiplied by 230 by 5 uh, multiplied by 500 divided by 500 tell me what is the answer at most of the positions we are getting 196 196 it means that it is showing minimum reinforcement minimum reinforcement here it is provided by the software so but it is matching with your codal requirement or not if you are uh, uh, defining the is 456 code for the design purpose in the software so whether the software is following the correct clauses or not give me answer fast don't take much time 0.85 multiplied by 230 multiplied by 500 divided by 500 hello yeah 195 195.5 good 195 point 195.5 whether it is matching with your ETAB's result or not hello sir yes sir it is exactly matching so this is the way how to validate software is just a software okay if you are giving the right input so you will get you should get the right output if you are giving the wrong input the software will give you wrong output remember so at every state i will let you know what is how you can how you can validate okay say so, so you will get the confidence over your structure most of the time after completion of masters uh, even phd there uh, we are not in the state of designing this uh, structure and we are not in uh, in the state of designing and signing over the uh, design result why because of lack of confidence so that we will that you will get after completion of this training program i will uh, uh, mean with surety i can say after this training program you will be able to design schedule detail entire structure on your own everything we will cover okay so after the design result so many things are here only to discuss but uh, due to time constraint i'm not going to cover so after this we have to prepare the schedule so how to prepare the schedule so important codes like isp 34 we are going to follow sp 34 we are not uh, means in deep uh, we are not having the in deep study in our academics but that we will cover here how to prepare the schedule how to prepare the schedule of column how to prepare the schedule of the beam what is the minimum criteria what is the maximum criteria for the beam column slab for the foundation every everything we will cover in detail okay and along with the in in the light of this codal requirement is 456 sp34 we are going to prepare the schedule uh, in the light of design output whatever the design result we are getting here we are not going to prepare the schedule and detail with the software why there is a specific and, and, and actual reasoning beyond why we are not going to use the uh, ETAB's schedule and detail result. Why? I will let you know. Okay. There is a reasoning, but we are preparing this schedule or uh, not. We are actually, we are means what almost all the consultant or almost all the uh, consultancies, they are preparing the schedule manually like this. Like we are going to prepare the schedule of beam uh, for each particular beam how to prepare the schedule i will let you know in detail for the columns i will let you know in detail for this foundation i will let you know in detail uh, for the slab everything then how to prepare this layout uh, manually everything everything i will cover in detail 
ओके सो आफ्टर हैविंग दिस प्रिपेयरिंग द शेड्यूल वी आर गोइंग टू प्रिपेयर दी दिस काइंड ऑफ रिपोर्ट यू विल बी एबल टू प्रिपेयर दिस काइंड ऑफ रिपोर्ट लाइक फॉर इंटायर प्रोजेक्ट डिटेलिंग यू विल बी एबल टू नो हाउ टू प्रिपेयर द डिटेल ओके फॉर फॉर द फाउंडेशन फॉर द कॉलम फॉर द स्लैब ओके सो दिस इज वॉट कवरेज फॉर दिस मीडियम राइज स्ट्रक्चर and while solving this uh, this entire uh, medium rise structure we are ta taking the help of spread sheets that i have uh, shared earlier also a spread sheets uh, so here just example so many sheets are there there like this so many excellent sheets are there and th those all sheets are practical okay so with this sheet we are going to prepare the schedule and detail and design the entire structure thereafter we are moving to new software that is what rcdc software so in your uh, mind there may be a question like why we are going to use this rcdc software why it is needed to learn this rcdc software so if you look into the market it is a very very demanding software as i earlier told you it is not just to make you uh, uh, share only the uh, software knowledge i am trying to make you uh, perfect or ready for the industry ready for the consultancy ready to start your own consultancy as a structural engineer so basically what yes every file we will provide yes sir don't worry okay whatever your doubt and question you can ask me in in the end of the session everything we will share okay everything we will share don't worry okay so what we are talking about yeah why we are going to look at the rcdc software so rcdc software is uh, what uh, actually will help you Uh, complete your work within a short period of time see as you have seen in the etap software like in the etap software we are getting the design result then uh, this uh, in respect of this desi design result we have to prepare the schedule we are going to prepare the schedule like this the schedule of column schedule of beam but this is what manually but if i am going to prepare even myself only if i am going to prepare the schedule it uh, manually so i need to complete this project uh, for completion of this scheduling and detailing for this project simple g plus 3 4 floor i need to have 2 uh, to 3 hours how many hello can anyone repeat how many hours 2 to 3 2 to 3 hours i need to uh, spend to complete this so that is not possible for me every time i am going to spend the this much time and if you if you are beginners if you are going to do this manually so it will take 4 to 5 hours so that is not this either if at the time we have not to uh, uh, deal any one project if you are going to start any consultancy at a time you have to deal so many projects and scenario is what the uh, uh, client giving the design uh, report uh, uh, plan for the design purpose they will ask about the design result by tomorrow within one day how you can complete everything design scheduling and detailing so to complete this work within a short period of time this rcdc software is there hello so the work that is going to be completed within uh, mini, uh, uh, manually with 2 uh, to 3 hours that is going to be solved by or completed by within 10 to 15 minutes only how many hello 10 to 15 minutes within 10 to 15 minutes that is the power of this rcdc software is a very demanding software so is it is for the it is capable of designing also it is capable of uh, 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 scheduling also it is capable of uh, detailing also but normally it is known for scheduling and detailing so it is what but in in this software you can you can't perform the analysis you can't prepare the model it is not for modeling it is not for analysis so it is asking about the analysis report it is asking about the analysis report if you are giving the analysis report to this software this will make everything automatically this is what beam layout if you are going to prepare this beam layout manually so it takes time 1 hour 15 uh, at least uh, like uh, 30 minute but that will be solved in a single click in a single click you will get this uh, this drawing okay so this is what the power of this rcdc software so it is asking about the analysis report so that analysis report we are going to take from etap software and that analysis report we are going to put in rcdc software and we are going to proceed for the preparing the uh, design then see automatically you will get the schedule 
then you will get the detail automatically then you will get the layout then you will get the column design result then uh, detail for the column detail for the slab detail for the uh, schedule for the slab then see this kind of excellent uh, result you are getting with this rcdc software then we are going to the foundation design result so very very interesting discussion will be there for when we are talking about this rcdc software when we are practicing with this rcdc software very interesting everything we, you will get within a single within a single click and you will you can uh, save this result in cad format and you can directly uh, uh, with some input uh, you can send it on site for the site execution okay so this rcdc software we are going to cover here that will help you to prepare the schedule and detail uh, means in advanced way okay so in this way we are going to cover a real life project uh, this will be the second section in the first section i will i will make you comfort with the tab software along with the along with the commands along with the uh, validation along with the dummy project it's, uh, one simple project we will take in the first section in the second section we will cover this real life project uh, and every real, real challenges we are going to discuss there okay thereafter we are moving to next part i mean third section of this training program there we are going to cover all the advanced concept for the hierarchy structure hello you all are with me yes sir okay mm -hmm. so in the, in the third section we are going to cover all the advanced concept uh, like uh, if you are going to deal this kind of hierarchy structure okay this is what hierarchy structure g plus what uh, uh, it is a uh, uh, 22 23 floor floor 22nd 23rd 23 22 floor building is there if you are going to deal this right this kind of structure okay so only the gravitational load will not be enough in this you have to assign the earthquake loading in this you have to assign the wind loading and there are so many different types of the load that you have to assign over this structure okay and then uh, <clears throat> uh, like uh, there are some different thing in comparison of your uh, uh, medium rise structure how to position the column how to position the shear wall okay this is the most important thing like suppose if you are going to deal this uh, <clears throat> like a high rise structure okay so basically uh, stiffness ductility and strength most of the trainers they are lagging to discuss this point if they are if if you are going to use uh, if you are going to work over the high rise structure stiffness ductility and strength if you want to design high rise structure and if you are not having the knowledge of what does mean by the stiffness what does mean by the ductility what does mean by the strength and what is what its role on your structure design you will not able to design your structure as economical as and 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 stable very important without of knowledge this stiffness ductility and strength uh, you will not be able to design perfect and your stiffness is going to be controlled by the positioning of the vertical elements like column and shear wall how to control the stiffness your torsional irregularity we are controlled by the stiffness and stiffness depend on the positioning of the columns positioning of the shear wall positioning and deciding the section sizes so who will who will tell you how you will come to know about this i think the only your software knowledge is not not the meaning of becoming the structural engineer so here we are going to cover everything along with the software so not only the software here we are going to cover here we are going 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 to cover complete structural engineering complete structural engineering we are going to discuss here okay so next thing is what like uh, stiffness now stiffness ductility and strength there after the next point am audible or not hello yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yeah good good then as the quick loading wind loading uh, how to us uh, how to, what does mean this this type of different loading actually all the basic thing that we will be covered in medium rise structure here with high rise structure we are going to cover all the advanced topic all the advanced topic for the high rise structure so how to calculate the wind load how to calculate the earthquake load what are the different methods of analysis like static method of analysis with earthquake loading is dynamic method of analysis with earthquake loading most of the time students are confused when to say when to use static method when to use dynamic method in static method which method we have to use in dynamic method which method we have to use uh, uh, what is the difference between the static and dynamic what will be the difference between static and dynamic when to perform the time history method when to perform the uh, response spectrum method 
uh, when to perform the equivalent static method, what their manual calculation, how to validate the result with the manual calculation in the software. So that all things I will cover in the software. Then how to calculate the wind loading. So we have we are having the excellent sheet for, for doing all these things. For making the calculation of these all. This Excel sheet along with all those Excel sheets. See wall load. If you are going to deal high rise structure. How to calculate the wall load. What materials we have to use for the high, high rise structure. That we will discuss how to calculate the slab load, area load. How to calculate the terrace load. What uh, sunk slab load. Then how to calculate the seismic loading. How to calculate the wind loading. Okay. How you can assign over the in, in the software. Okay. That will be covered in detail. Thereafter. See, we are going to cover all the advanced topics like modal analysis. What does mean by the modal analysis? So, uh, modal analysis is very important to be, uh, to predict the behavior of a structure. Whether is there any torsional irregularity is there or not in your structure? Let me show you. Okay, this is actually not present here. Okay, I will let you know. Uh, so, modal analysis will be there. So, how to correct the modal analysis? What does mean the modal analysis? Whether in, whether your structure is having the torsional irregularity or not, how to check if it is having the torsional irregularity. So how to correct the torsional irregularity? What does mean the p delta analysis? How to assign this p delta in analysis in the software? So in the define section, the p delta option is there. So which option we have to use? Non-iterative, iterative based. How to define this p delta analysis? And what is the basic concept of this p delta analysis? And which code is saying to perform this p delta analysis? So IS 16700 uh, sorry 2017 is saying that uh, for high rise structure whose height is more than 50 meter it is compulsory to perform the P delta analysis. Hello, which code is saying? Hello? Hello? Sir? IS? Uh, one six seven double zero. will uh, will ask about to uh, which uh, means p delta analysis. What does the property mod uh, concept of meshing? When to perform the meshing? That is very important. When to perform the meshing? What what will happen if you are going to assign the meshing over your structure? Okay. When to perform the meshing? Then what does the uh, diaphragm? when to perform the diaphragm over your structure so why we are going to assign the diaphragm over the structure let me show you just go to 3d view uh 3d view and see go to set display option go to diaphragm ex extend say apply so see this is what diaphragm why we are assigning assigning the diaphragm what is the use of this diaphragm most of the time practitioners they are not having the uh, deep knowledge about it and and beginners they are they are totally blank about the application of this diaphragm. So why we are assigning, why we are defining this diaphragm over this structure that we will discuss with the concept in detail. Everything I am not showing like uh, just go to do this and just click over this and just say apply then over. No. Here we are going to uh, let you know, uh, make you, you will be able to know from concept. Reasoning will be there behind every action. So why we are assigning this diaphragm uh, torsional irregularity, how to correct that torsional irregularity that we will cover. Okay, then orthogonality, non-orthogonality of building, load combination. If you are going to deal high rise structure, okay, if the medium rise structure is there, then okay, no problem. But if you are going to deal high rise structure, so about 50 to 100 load combination you need to define. How many? Hello? 50 to 100. 50 to 100, 50 to 100 50 load combination. <laughs> So, where, where, how to define this load combination? So, uh, see, again, there should not be only the discussion, blindly discussion will be there. There will be a brief discussion, like uh, this load combination, I will let you know, see. See, I will share these sheets also, load combination. So, about so many load combination, we need to define 75 load combination, we have to define in this. I will let you know how to define, then load envelope. Uh, what does the load in, load envelope, how to define load envelope, everything we will cover in detail, okay. Then, after that, the next point we are going to cover concept of property modifier. What does the modifier, which code is asking about the uh, assigned property modifier, property modifier, section modifier, strength modifier, uh, 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 stiffness modifier, moment of inertia modifier, this is the name of one thing. 
that is what property modifier so with the concept we will learn what does by this prop, uh, property modifier very interesting and very important discussion will be there okay then after that after that see uh, uh, we will cover everything we will check the stability of this structure in respect of uh, in respect of uh, different kinds of loading and uh, 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 we will check stability of the structure uh, along with the along with its torsional irregularity we will check stability of this structure along with its deformation deflection as code limits that the deformation of this structure should be in limit that we will check in detail okay so in this way we are going to cover the high rise structure okay in this way we are going to cover all the high rise structure okay so this will be the total uh, coverage of this training program got it hello yes sir now it's time if you are having any question doubt so okay one more thing i will let you uh, let me clear okay so daily live sessions will be there and uh, sir so how will you take the class sir so google, google meet our recorded video see daily live sessions will be there through google meet okay and uh, yeah and next day of the session you will get the recorded videos okay okay sir hello what timing timing will be evening 7:30 to 9 daily live sessions will be there a sample of that yeah very good yeah yeah I, we are having sample of certificate don't worry let me show you hello wait 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 just a minute someone yeah. is asking about the sample of certificate this okay, kind no, of no. iso certification will be there okay so this kind of certificate you will get after the completion of training some manual calculation along with this will be there detailed discussion will be there along this manual calculation then we will move to the software so actually uh, due to time constraint i am not able to show everything but uh, after having this demo session you, you will come to know what things you are going to learn am i right or wrong hello okay. yeah yes yeah. okay yeah hello yeah i have a small uh, i have some of the questions regarding your training so what by the first question is uh, you told that uh, the software we have rcdc in which we can uh, detail everything about the detailing of our building structure but also we have other software like a csi detailing so what about this this is my first question and my second question is we have also the other software the safe software which is exclusively using for foundations right so what what what, what is the necessity of a safe foundation and a safe software why not we are using the safe software here so this is my second question and third question is on excel sheets excel exclusively you are concentrated uh, for the designing of slabs for the designing of uh, foundations you you told that uh, you have some of the excel sheets so in that excel sheets we have various types of slabs for example one way or two way it is okay what about the waffle slabs what about the flat slabs how, how can we design those uh, slabs in uh, excel sheet this is my fourth question and third question is some of the miscellaneous topics where everyone was missing like water tanks underground tanks types of staircases like uh, and also uh, you know these are all the things which we have in uh, while designing of any building or any structure and my sixth question is plumbing and electrical works who can design all these works and uh, how the structural engineer how to think about all these things and before doing the structure how he has to uh, think in mind to design okay. any any other questions sir any yeah other only, questions? yeah of course uh, up to now these questions only uh, could you tell me please okay okay, okay. Uh, me, so, so first of all structural design field is a very vast field okay okay and it is not possible to cover everything in a one take first thing okay, okay. Okay. you are talk, you are saying that uh, the foundation is there and uh, the software is there like a safe software for the design of the foundation yeah so yeah. lot of things as you have seen lot of things we have already covered in this training program we have included mm. everything so to complete mm. this uh, com uh, the uh, content we need to have 90 hours more than 90 hours like 45 days 45 sessions we need to have mm. so it is not possible to include everything in one take first thing mm -hmm. second the for the foundation design yeah obviously we are using the uh, safe software for the complicated mm -hmm. uh, foundation like raft foundation pile foundation so there mm -hmm. is a, another program we have mm -hmm. planned and we are going to launch okay mm -hmm. so for mm -hmm. in that we are going to cover every every type of foundation like uh, uh, 
uh, step the foundation, isolated foundation, solo the foundation, eccentric foundation, step foundation, combined foundation, rough foundation, pile foundation, geotechnical report, how to read the geotechnical report, what important okay. things are there. So this is mm. what the another thing. If I'm going mm. to include that in here, so that is mm. what uh, it, it is will become a three month, four month program. Okay. 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 So first thing. And second okay. thing, as I told you, like uh, taking this uh, underground tank or ground tank, uh, that is yeah. what uh, I, as I, what that is. It is not possible to cover everything. Here I am okay. including because other trainers what they are doing, just taking, uh, just they are going to discuss about the uh, software. But yeah. I am trying my best to include as much as possible. Yeah, in future we are planning, we are adding these all different elements time by time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. What about plumbing and electrical, like uh, those uh, works? Yeah, that is also the responsibility. There, a simple drawing will be there, and uh, but actually we are not covering here that. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yes. Of course, these are all some of the miscellaneous uh, things uh, to ask, but uh, you know, these things will be uh, get knowledge by experience only. That one I can also know. But here, what uh, the thing what you said means uh, after knowing the uh, whatever the class. Uh, uh, completion, completion of your, of your coaching, coaching. Com uh, completion, completion of your training. training. So, so we are, we are going, going to um, uh, start a consultancy. Uh, so when so we start consultancy, these will problems will come, come to us. To then, us. then yes, yes, yeah. So is, that time, how so this is what my uh, intention is. Okay, okay. okay. Yes, uh, Moit, you are asking something. Sir, is there any part about post tension slab? No, no post tension. Post tension that uh, I have ex uh, shown whatever the things that I have shown that will be covered here. Okay, hmm. post tensioning slab will not be there.